So, um, and th these, these uh, three slides that I'm gonna walk through are part of what I call merchandise perspectives, right? And there are ways for you to think through your home technology assortment. So one way is to think about product categories. That's like you're a mm -hmm. department store, right? And like, which of these categories am I gonna play in? Another way, which is more consumer centric, is to think through the benefits that are delivered by home technology. So we've identified seven central benefits. Sometimes people call all of this stuff smart home, but I think that there are particular applications that have to do with smarts, right? And it's typically about when there are macros or multiple um, functions are mm -hmm. triggered, um, or there is uh, something up in the cloud that's monitoring and, uh, and making series of events to happen <coughs> with the technology in a house that's not controlled and directed specifically by the user. So mm -hmm. that's our definition of smarts and we've got a merchandise and marketing guide where you can read through this stuff in detail, but we've identified these seven central be benefits. Smart, healthy to us is one of the technology yep. uh, benefits, that, one of the benefits that can be delivered by technology, connected, and that's devices, uh, connected within the house, but it's also connection to the wide area network and uh, family and friends outside of the house. The green piece is something that we can deliver on with technology. Entertaining has always been a strong part, and that's the AV consumption side of things, but it's also entertaining guests and such. Mm -hmm. And then um, safe is the security and life safety aspects. And the, the one that we've added recently in the last, just the last two or three years is productive, right? Because of work, yeah. work from home. That makes sense. So you mentioned a resource. How can they get that resource? They can email me. Okay. They can you know, email, email anybody on our staff and we'll, we'll get you the merchant market. Um, you know, Lee, who you've worked with as guests, or Jess on the sponsor side of things, we can get you uh, to the link. It's, it's a long and windy document. It has, and it's about to go through uh, uh, a redo, but we've got like um, agendas and strategies for uh, meeting as a team, uh, working with your trade partners to develop your assortments and think through these things. But this is one of our merchandise perspectives. I, oh, so there's a lot of these. See, I'm, I'm just showing you. These, we've described every one of these. And I'll get to my next slide, I'm sorry. This is what happens when you pull a deck together. Room by room is another way to look at your um, your technology, right? Um, because it, rooms are designed to have a specific purpose and we have technology that can yeah. enhance the purpose of those rooms. So, and it's, a, it's another way to actually present technology to buyers, right? Benefits can be one way and you can ask about whether those yeah. benefits are important to somebody and then drill down to the technology that delivers, but room by room is another way, and you know, a lot of buyers look at a home as a collection of rooms. So. Well, and the first way of looking at it, you're really trying to get around their mindset. So if security is the most important thing to the consumer that you're talking to, then that might be where you wanna lean in. If health is something that the consumer's most important to them, that might be how you lean into your messaging. Versus when you go room by room, you're really talking about the applications of how that gets looped in. So yeah. if you pair these two together and sort of start to understand what, what makes my consumer move, what motivates them, what is the thing that keeps them awake at night? Yeah. Um, is it their security? Is it their health? Is it their sustainability, their impact on the environment? Is it their kids? What is it that's in that mind of the consumer that's gonna help them move and make a decision? Um, and then take these rooms and use them as an example on how to integrate it. Yeah, I think you know these two, the, um, the central benefits and the room by room are the most um, consumer-centric ways mm -hmm. to think through your technology offers and packaging and to explore yeah. with customers. But the, the taxonomy, when you have an enthusiast buyer, they know what categories they wanna be in. Sometimes that is, and it's typically gonna be the male 
part of the buying team or the male buyer who's going to have d deep knowledge of those product categories, and they may want to go through a product taxonomy because they've already yeah. know what, what features they're looking for. And there are a lot of um, experienced users out there now. Especially when it comes to the connection piece of it, because everybody's tried to make their own connection in some way. So this is your slide. Yeah, so we've done a couple of consumer surveys around smart home tech, around health and wellness, around sustainability that I think apply to some of these pieces. And what we found when we asked consumers, so this was somebody who already had at least one smart tech product in their home is who we asked this. Um, what are the top three smart home products they would pay to include in their home? And what we found is that video doorbells and smart thermostats are really the gateway drug to technology adoption in the home. So if, they've, if they want those two things or one of those two things, that's the first step for them feeling comfortable and what is happening as far as letting smart tech do things for them. Instead of them having to adjust the thermostat, instead of them having to check the doorbell, these are really convenient smart tech pieces that people can wrap their head around why there is value there. And so, you know, if we look down sort of like the next top two, I just want to point out everybody says and feels that Alexa and Siri and Google Home are really the gateways there, but we're only seeing about 27% that are saying, like, I would pay more to have these integrated into my home versus a video doorbell already being installed. 